Rogue has always been a meteor class regardless of the version of the game, but with enough preparation in this version, it could become a top tier class. Have you found yourself spending countless hours in Warcraft logs scrolling through the top tier rogues to see what they're doing different, and why don't you get an answer? And then you compare yourself to the top rogue in your guild, and you see a demolishing gap of DPS? Wait, maybe it's because you're bad? But no, that's not the answer. It's because you don't know the extent of the generosity that the top rogues go to be on top of the meters and the list in the Warcraft logs. But today, I will bestow upon you my wisdom and knowledge that I have gathered in the past few weeks from Sunken Templarate and Season of Discovery so you can become a top tier rogue, which might one day grow back your receding hairline. So the first thing you want to do is go back to Nomorgon, grab this trinket right here, and then drop NG for these items. The flask is permanent, so crafting them once is good enough for the rest of the game, and the potions are a must-have for burst damage and cooldowns. You might want to stock up on those in case no Morgan isn't cleared anymore and mats are not in the auction house. And even though it's sad to lose the items below, you can still go ahead and obtain the items above the screen. Before I get into the point of this video, here's a list of the consumables that you have to bring to one singular raid in Sunken Temple. You can go ahead and pause the video if you want to buy them in the auction house or check them out. Alright, so to start this off, I'm gonna tell you guys the normal things that everybody knows, like Master of Subtlety, which is not optimally used, but obviously people usually start with Invis when they go into the fights, but after that they forget the Vanish, they either don't use it, they either use it without cooldowns which is a bad idea you should always use your vanish and stealth of course during paranoia or the flask or whenever you use your helm and maybe if you have the gloves equipped still you want to use them during that you don't want to just randomly vanish without any cooldowns all right so here's an example on my master subtlety uptime on this boss fight i just wait for the bosses to come back to each other I get ready to pop my BF, potions and everything, and by the luck I had the paranoia and the flask procced, but they were kind of early, which is fine, but then I procced my vanish to make sure that my massive subtlety is going through all of the blade for damage, which it should be done this way. You should never use your massive subtlety or vanish at random times without any cooldowns or procs, which majority of the rogues are doing this right now. They're just randomly using it without thinking about anything. So the second thing I want to talk about is redirect. Whenever you use this ability, it stores up the combo points that you have on your current target into you, and until you hit something with mutilate or anything that generates combo points, you will apply all of the combo points into that target. Meaning, whenever you're fighting a boss like Shade of Renicus, or maybe Morphaz and Hazaz, or Jamal and Ogum, or even Dreamsight and Weaver, you can just use this ability, get the combo points, and go on to the next target, and maybe just get a Rupture up if you're playing Carnage, or get an SND up, or just end Venom right away if you have 5 deadly poisons already. This is a really helpful ability that they added for us, it's a really low cooldown as well, so it's nice, and it doesn't cost any energy. The example I have right here is Morphaz and Hazaz. I basically just get 3 combo points, or maybe sometimes even 5 if I'm exposing, and instantly either shadow step or go up to the next target and hit it with something and do my finisher that I want to use. The third thing I want to tell you guys is not the biggest DPS increase, but if everyone is using it, why shouldn't you? So basically, there is a bug with Snowball where whenever you're getting knocked back from something, if you use this thing, it will knock you back again and it gets you stuck on the ground. This is only usable on one bus, kind of, which is the double dragons, when they do the double knockback. You just wait for the first knockback, get it done, wait for the second knockback, and while you're in the air, before getting knocked into the hole maybe or something like that, insta snowball yourself, which I will leave a macro down below in the description for you guys. But Snowball seems to be going up in price, so I don't know if you guys should just invest into this too much. It's not the biggest thing ever, but if 15 people do it, it's gonna make a difference. The fourth thing I want to talk about is Restorative Pots and Elixir of Poison Resistance. So what they do is, they remove the effects that are bad for your character, which is attack speed reductions, charms, effects that sleeps you, 
damage reductions, curses, and everything else. What you can use them on is Light Defenders, the Double Trolls, which is Jamal and Ogum, Shade of Veronicus, and even Hokar, which it's kind of a grief to use it on that bus because the person who gets the curse needs to move out of the melee. Also, one thing I want to talk about is that these bosses do certain casts that is an insane DPS loss for the entire raid, such as the Atolai Defenders, Gashers, Demo Shout, and Sheet of Renicus's Fear, Hakar's Fear, which has to be kicked. I believe Jamal's Fear can also be kicked, but we never tried because we didn't know about it, so you can go ahead and check that out and let me know in the comment down below. But these are some things that you have to kick, otherwise you're gonna be doing half the damage, as you can see here on the video. The off-target demo shouted us, and I'm just doing 1k less mutilate damage. It's that insane on the boss fights. Alright, so as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, domesticated attack chicken is actually a really important thing to have, because every time the chicken enrages, it has a chance of battle squawking, which the normal gnomish chicken doesn't have. So you have to get that, and you need to make sure that all of the people in your group have the chicken as well, just like you. And then just circle jerk with your friends before the boss fights for a minute and a half, and hope for the best that maybe one of you procs and maybe all of you proc. Who knows? Shit can happen, and maybe it doesn't. Thanks for the result, I guess. Okay, so if you played Era before, you know that resistance portions are actually a huge deal such as Frost, Shadow, Fire, and Nature damage. You can always have a Shadow one running all the time with a Holy because you only want them for two bosses anyways. And the Nature pots are just fucking insane. They're really nice for every boss. You can always reuse them mid-fight as a rogue because you can't really use anything else. And the Irradiated Mildly Reju pots don't really share cooldown with anything, so it's really nice to have them. And as you can see here, in some of these boss fights, you see me dropping super low without remembering that I should re nature pot in case I might die, which my healer saved me, so thanks to them. But in another part here, you can see the druid and warrior my raid frames who got knocked into the shit pile of the poison, and they didn't really have a nature pot, so they just instantly melted down and died without even being able to step out of it. Which happens sometimes, so just always have a nature pot ready to use as a rogue, because you can't really use anything else anyways, and it might save your life, unlike them. The last tip I have for you guys, it's rune swapping between bosses, because this is kind of turning into Wrath of the Lich King, where glyphs are kind of mandatory to use for certain fights, where a boss fight is short and the boss fight is long, and you have to swap around. Sometimes Carnage always pulls through if you are doing a short fight, which is only maybe like 4 boss fights here that are actually short. The rest of them are all above a minute and a half, usually for the majority of the pugs and guilds. But let's say for a Talarian, which is around 20 seconds to 30 seconds for everyone at the moment, you should be using Carnage and Undermong the Thieves, because the moment you start up on the boss fight, all you wanna do is dump as many envenoms as you can during your pressure of the burst. You don't wanna do anything else there. Also, to optimally use oil defumulation, you wanna kind of wait for a time where you can't really hit the boss and you have to walk up to it, or it stunned you, or maybe the boss went to sleep like Shade of Renicus and it wasn't hitable for now. So all you have to do is let them be immune in some ways, like a car when he's spawning to oil accumulation and then hit them. Because whenever you oil accumulation, it refreshes your auto attacks and it doesn't swing until it's done again. The bosses you can use this on is Avatar of Hakar whenever the big bloodkeeper spawns and Hakar himself. You can also use this on every single time of Shade of Veronica's being awakened. You can use this on the double dragons when they are coming down or going up, or maybe then when they're knocking you back. And pretty much on any opener that you do before using stealth, just pop an oil of emulation. 
if you would like to support my channel make sure to like the video share it with your friends and comment down below if this was helpful in any way and subscribe if you want to keep up with the new videos i'm going to be covering cataclysm as well and the upcoming sod phases so stay tuned for those see you for now